Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Podemos party in Spain has become a major force. It's gaining momentum in Spain the way Syriza did in Greece. Podemos also secured five seats in the last European parliamentary elections. European pollsters are saying that if elections were held today in Spain, Podemos would win. The next general elections in Spain will be held in October or November of this year, and Podemos is poised to take power. If they do, they will pose a serious threat to the ruling elite. As a result, our next guest writes, Spanish financial, economic, political, and media establishment are on the defensive and in panic, having passed laws that strengthen the repression. The heads of the major banks in Spain are particularly uneasy, says Vincent Navarro, who joins me in our studios in Baltimore. Vincent Navarro is professor of public policy at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore and of the Pompeu Fabra University in Barcelona, Spain. He's director of the Johns Hopkins University, Pampu Fabra University's Public Policy Center, also located in Barcelona. He's the author of the Spanish bestseller, Hey Alternativas. Good to have you with us. I'm very pleased to be here. So let's begin at the beginning, which is how did Podemos come to be? Who is Podemos? How did it rise to this level of power that they took five seats in the European Parliament? Well, it goes back to the transition from dictatorship to democracy in Spain. It happened in a, in a situation in which the right wing successes of the fascist party con, uh, controlled the state and all the major media in the country. The, it was very powerful. On the other side, the left, uh, who had been the leading force of the democratic forces during the dictatorship, uh, were very weak. They just uh, came back from the exile, or they left the jail, they were in the clandestinity. Weak as a political form, but strong in the sense of popular movements, they wanted to get rid of the dictatorship. But it was not an equilibrium. The right wing was much more powerful than not the progressive forces led by the left. Uh, as a consequence, democracy was established, it was very limited. The, the democratic laws were very skewed in favor of conservative forces. For example, uh, Salamanca, a conservative region, you need 30,000 votes to get to a member of the parliament. Barcelona, you get almost 200,000 to get a member of the parliament. Barcelona is an industrial city, mm -hmm. uh, center of the progressive forces in Spain. The same in Bilbao, the same in Madrid. So, in that sense, uh, there was a very, very insufficient democracy. As a consequence, mm -hmm. uh, the welfare state, for example, was very underfunded. Uh, the conception of Spain was inherited from the fascist regime, mm -hmm. uh, a Jacobin state, centre mm -hmm. in Madrid, and everyone is a region of that. Uh, uh, the new generations came up with the different values mm -hmm. and fear, which played a very important role because the dictatorship was a very, very nasty one. Mm -hmm. For every uh, political assassination that Mussolini did, Franco did 10,000. Mm -hmm. And even today, Spain is the second country after Cambodia with m a larger number of people who have disappeared because of political reasons. So mm -hmm. the fear was uh, still uh, in the street level. Mm -hmm. But the new generations broke with that. Mm -hmm. And they just said, enough, we want democracy. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, the demand for democracy was a revolutionary demand in Spain mm -hmm. because democracy was very limited. Mm -hmm. So the Indignados movement mm -hmm. was the first symptom of that. Mm -hmm. So people went out of the street and said, enough, we want authentic democracy, uh, real, the democracy real, real democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that sense, they knew that the political system was not representative. Mm -hmm. The famous phrase, they do not represent us, no not represent them. They were not anti-political parties. Mm -hmm. They were pro-democracy, but they didn't feel those parties were representing their interests. Mm -hmm. And they were calling for other forms of democracy besides representative democracy. They asked for direct form of democracy and so on. What, is it, what is it that uh, the Spanish people knew that others didn't in the sense that most people are content with representative democracy, but obviously here they're calling for a participatory democracy. Because it was not resolving their problems. 
I think mm -hmm. that uh, when the crisis came up mm -hmm. uh, in 2007, it appeared quite clearly that uh, the political parties were, the two major political parties were instrument of large financial and economic interests. Mm -hmm. So the instrumentalization of, of the state by these uh, big uh, uh, financing hours play a very important role in Spain. Mm -hmm. The banking has played a very important role. Mm -hmm. So in that respect, it, it appears quite clearly mm -hmm. that the parties were implementing policies, they didn't have any popular mandate. Mm -hmm. The austerity policies of cutting uh, social expenditures, reducing health services, reducing education, labor reforms that caused a big decline of salaries, mm -hmm. uh, unemployment increase, all that was done without any popular mandate. It was not uh, in the electoral platform of those parties. Mm -hmm. So uh, the state is still losing any legitimacy. Mm -hmm. So that is where... So these policies of austerity measures that were talked about at the G20 level, yeah. implemented, really began with Zapatero, not the current government. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. When that happened in 2007... Which is a socialist government. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That is why it lost all the goodwill had building up, mm -hmm. because uh, prior to that period, they were responsible for some of the developments of the welfare state. Mm -hmm. They didn't go as far as they should have, but still, it's true that according to the social democratic tradition in Europe, they uh, created the national service, they increased social expenditures, but that changed. When the crisis came up, the way how to respond to that crisis was the same than any other conservative or liberal party, what mm -hmm. in Europe is called the neoliberal policies. Mm -hmm. uh, cut austerity and uh, lowering wages. It's an attack to labor. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is why, in that respect, in the others uh, uh, mobilized, calling for democracy. Mm -hmm. And the parties were not responding to them. And the political expression of that movement in the others was Podemos, which is broader than the indignados, but no question without the indignados, Podemos would not exist. And that is why Podemos is the political channel of enormous anger and frustration towards the political and media establishment that is not responding to the people's needs. Uh, so it's a protest movement, but more than a protest movement. It comes up, they wants to measure changes. Uh, where, as I said before, today, uh, the revolutionary call is not for the nationalization of the means of production. It is for having authentic democracy in Spain. Uh, the second transition is what is called the first transition went from dictatorship to dramatically insufficient democracy. The second transition is from insufficient democracy to democracy. Democracy not only in the political sense, but also in the economic sense. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot have democracy when there's so many inequalities where... Uh, uh, that those inequalities, the concentration of income and wealth, uh, diminish dramatically the political process. Without economic democracy, it's not right. possible to right. have democracy. Right. Um, can you break down for us, when we talk about austerity measures or government policy that uh, has been cut down, uh, it's a somewhat abstract for some people. Get specific in terms of what do we really mean when you implement austerity measures? Well, for example, uh, uh, Zapatero uh, uh, froze the pensions. Uh, the pension system in Spain is responsible uh, for getting out of poverty 62% of the elderly. So without the pension system, the public policy system, 62-64% of the uh, senior citizens will be poor. So it's the most important anti-poverty program. The same United States, by the way. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it's a very popular program. And Zapatero, uh, social democracy, uh, when it is being told by the Troika, which is the European Central Bank, the European Commission, the International Money Fund, you have to reduce public expenditures. Uh, uh, what he does, he freezes the pensions in order to get 1,500 million euros. But he could have done differently. He could uh, reverse the lowering of property taxes, which he implemented, uh, in 2006, and with that he would have gotten double the number of 2,500 millions of euros. And this seems R so obvious, uh, really. I mean, who would weaken the weakers in your society? Uh, you know, pensioners are older, elderly people trying to survive day to day. They're not a rich class. How could because that it's be? Because it's a class issue. I think that the, 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 the uh, dominant groups uh, and the dominant class dominates the state. So uh, uh, to uh, increase property taxes affects those who have property, uh, who is not the general population. Uh, pensioners 
are relatively weak. The same in terms of uh, the current president, Rajoy, of the Conservative Party. Uh, he cut $6,000 million for the National Health Service. That is a frontal attack to the National Health Services. Why he does that? He could have gotten far more money by reversing the lowering of taxes or capital taxes. So uh, for those large enterprises that uh, have $140 million as part of their activity, which represents less than 1% of all the large enterprises in Spain. So, uh, but this group is very powerful. I speak about Xerox, uh, Google, uh, Telefonica. Uh, uh, they are very powerful over the state. So it rather cuts on the national service, which affects the majority of people, the popular classes, and, but does not touch on the powerful. That is the meaning of. So what we see now in Greece is obvious, in Spain is obvious, the same in Portugal, in Ireland, is that the uh, welfare state, what is called the social Europe, is under enormous frontal attack. What does it mean? Uh, listen, uh, the waiting time to get intervened for cataracts has increased five times. Mm -hmm. uh, the time per, uh, when you go to see a general practitioner, mm -hmm. the time of visit, uh, rather than being 10 minutes, now is uh, 4 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, the number of uh, students in a classroom, uh, rather than in the uh, age 9, 10, rather than being 20, now might be 35. So that deteriorates the quality of the services and the quality of life, not to speak about unemployment. 55% uh, of the young people in 55% uh, youth and unemployment. Uh, absolutely, 55%. And for the general public, it's 25%. So, mm -hmm. as you can see, th that hurts people. Mm -hmm. hurt. And, of course, those who uh, govern say, oh, we don't have any alternative. We have a, uh, that is why the book that we published showing, yes, of course, you have alternative. Uh, why do you cut here and you don't cut there? And you see when, who are the ones who suffer, who are the ones who get free right, class issue becomes very clear. Uh, who controls the state? That is why. And the social democrats were part of the problem because they were absorbed into that. And they, some of them, they didn't think there was alternatives. But of course, there were alternatives. And that is what uh, Podemos came up. And that is why uh, it was a huge... I must say, it might sound immodest, but I predicted that that would happen. And Podemos is the expression of popular anger, saying, enough. And in that respect, uh, in a very peaceful, in a very mature, in a very uh, convincing, democratic way, nothing violent, but when people go to the street, they have a lot of power. Yeah. So the rise of Podemos is an example for the world. So um, let's take up the conditions and the economic conditions that led to the rise of Podemos in our next segment on the Real News Network. I'm talking to Professor Vincent Navarro from Johns Hopkins University, and please join us for segment two. <laughs> 